How many people here are really excited about listening to a demographer for an hour? Yeah, a bunch of liars. <laughs> people ask me, you know, who is Ken Gronbeck? You know what I tell them? I'm just a person that made a very interesting discovery. No, so I'm driving in my car. My daughter's in the back seat, and uh, we, her friend is sitting next to her. And I don't know why her friend didn't ask me, but her friend leans over and says, what does your dad do? And my daughter said, he's a demographer. And her friend says, a demographer, is that kind of like a, uh, an economist or a, an accountant? I thought to myself, come on, Libby, give her a good answer on this one. And my daughter said, no, no. Accountants and economists count money and stuff. My dad counts people, and people are more important than money and stuff. Is that true? Yes, okay, well, it's, look, we're on the same page here. I'm a demographer. I live in a strange world. I look at people all day long and it gives me a very different perspective. And I want to bring you into that world because I think it will change the way you think. Before I became a demographer, uh, I, I was in the marketing field. I was in marketing for Volkswagen of America. I was in marketing in my own advertising agency for 20 years. We built the agency up to about $40 million. But I made a discovery in 1996 that changed everything for me. I got a call from American Honda and they said, Ken, did you run the ads? Any marketing people here? How would you like to get that call? I said, yeah, I ran the ads. Traffic is off. And he said, traffic is non-existent. He said, the only consolation is Kawasaki, Suzuki, and Yamaha have the same problem. So I said, whoa, we better get to work. They sent an elite contingent over from Japan. They studied the problem. They said that the price was the issue. We tried everything. My 1992 business for the Japanese brands and motorcycles had fallen 80%. And we didn't have a clue as to why. But in 1996, I, I discovered why. I'm sitting in my office in Middletown, Connecticut, reading the Hartford Current, our blue newspaper. And it's saying that Generation X are lazy, slacker couch potatoes. They're not involving themselves in the political process. They're not voting. They're not giving up their time, not running for office. How many Gen Xers here? Get out. <laughs> The discovery in 1996 of what happened to the Japanese motorcycle market, specifically Honda, launched me into the field of demography. In fact, it, 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 it became overwhelming for me, to, almost to the point where I lost sight of what I was doing. I called in our research department. I said, find out everything you can about Generation X born 65 to 84. Everything. Statistical abstracts, Bureau of Labor Statistics, CIA fact book, census data, I want to know everything. Three days he comes back and he said, they don't perform at the level of the boomers. I said, so they're lazy. He said, no, there's fewer of them. We discovered in 1996 that as the baby boomers exited the very narrow demo that bought Japanese motorcycles, men 16 to 24 years old, when they exited that, business over a very short period of time, about six years, fell 80%. If they can have that kind of effect, the exiting baby boomers can have that kind of an effect on that market, what else could that, what else is happening? So we went back and looked at the generation born after the baby boomers, born 65 to 84, generation X, and said, you know, the fact is generation X is 11% smaller than the baby boomers. They're missing 9 million people. This is my most complex slide. Two similar groups of people. One has 1,000, one has 500. Which group will require the most food? Thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Demographics precipitates economics, not the other way around. Economics is money and stuff. Which came first, people or money and stuff? People. I get a call from the ICCFA. <laughs> it's kind of a cool organization. International Cemetery Cremation Funeral Association. Read my book. I said, Ken, we've got a problem in our industry. It just sounded strange to me. <laughs> I said, what's the problem? He said, we were conducting funerals and cremations 10 years ago for over 3 million people. Now we're conducting funerals and cremations for just a little over 2 million people. What's going on? Are people doing them at home? I said, turn to the chart in my book that has live birth. When do people die? So all we really need to do, Mr. COO, is to go back, go back and take a look at how many people were born 70 to 80 years ago. And we could forecast how many people you're gonna conduct funerals and cremations for. And he said, it's, that's all it is? And I said, that's exactly what it is. I said, what are you gonna do when the boomers start to die? Can you see what's coming? And there was a pause and he said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the study of, of, of demography and the study of demographics is, is an incredible and accurate tool for forecasting a company's business. Without it, you can't know the size of the market that's headed your way. You see this? 
Generation Y, Generation Y was actually born 1985, 2004. There's 83 million of them. It's almost, an, they almost have an extra year's worth of births uh, in excess of what the baby boomers have. It's incredible, they're bigger than the baby boomers. Why is that significant here in the United States? You know why? Because we're the only Western culture and we're the only industrialized nation in the world that is having children above replacement level fertility. Demographers are accurate 80% uh, of the time. Why? Because the people that are going to shape our demographic future, shape our economic future, 50 years from now, are already born. So we can figure them out. We have a lot of information at our fingertips, right, right through the internet. Bureau of Labor Statistics is incredible. Bureau of Labor Statistics has studied everything. We paid for it with our tax dollars. Bureau of Labor Statistics says they can forecast what people consume at what age. It's endless. Endless secondary research has already been done and it's available to anyone because it's paid for by our tax dollars. It just needs analysis. Well, that's what I do. Anybody here from Connecticut? I'm from Connecticut. Where's Connecticut State Fair? It's in Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah, Connecticut, Connecticut State Fair. It's a small state. You don't know whether to send people home or to buy more hot dogs. You're looking out, there's a few people there, but you're nervous. It costs you a lot of money to be at the state fair. So who do you call? Do you call an economist? He'll send you some graphs. Do you call your accountant? He'll tell you what you did last year. That's no good. You call a demographer, you call me. This is the conversation. I don't know whether to send people home or to buy more hot dogs from where you are, from where your stand is. Can you see the parking lot? Yes, I can. Describe it to me. It's filling up with school buses. Buy more hot dogs. You with me? I am a speaker that, that knows how to speak and brings good information to the table that will change the way people think and they'll be happier to have that information. No more redheads. Our kids, the redhead gene is disappearing. You have redheads in your family? Hang on to them, they could be worth real money. <laughs> I get calls three, four years after I speak from people and they'll say, I, I talk about you all the time and I use the formula of understanding demography every day and what I do. You change the way I think. 30 million young Chinese men who have no prospect of marrying because there are no female counterparts. You think that's a problem? They have nuclear weapons. These guys are gonna be cranky. <laughs> you look at demography and the power of understanding how it works and then I'm able to get up in front of a group of, of uh, several hundred people and leave them with information that they can use. You can't slow aging down, you can't speed it up, and you can't pretend it doesn't happen. You are older right now than when you walk through that door, and you're gonna be older when you walk through the door than you are right now, it's just slow. They've got to get their minds off of money and stuff and start counting people. Because when you count people, an understanding of the movement of money and stuff comes very naturally. In God we trust, don't forget it. Run background checks on everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Land of the free, home of the brave, God bless America, go get them guys, sell. Thank you.